Autobiography detailing the Apollo 13 mission to the moon in 1970. Fred Hayes was the lunar module pilot and he's sharing firsthand what happened when disaster struck three days into the mission. An oxygen tank exploded, causing one of his crew members to utter the iconic words, Houston, we've had a problem here. The lunar module was meant to land on the moon with two men, but Hayes had to pilot it back to Earth with three. His book is Never Panic Early, an Apollo 13 astronaut's journey, and Fred Hayes joins us live now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. When I look back on the story, everything about it is just so incredible. And I know you had background as a military fighter pilot. How were you able to control an emotions a, in terms of an emergency situation in an area that nobody really had been to before? Well, it was a combination of training and seeing what had gone on on previous missions, okay. starting with Apollo 7. Almost every mission had problems of some sort. And I knew the process that was going on on the ground uh, to work through the problems using uh, the brain trust we had around the country at the time uh, to solve the problems. So I had confidence and and uh, when I got back, I found out some people got less sleep on the ground than I got in flight. It's it's really unbelievable to, to think about the most infamous uh, mission ever in space. 50 years later, do you still think about it every day? I, I do think about it, uh, mainly in remembrance of di different ways. Uh, Jim Lovell, uh, my commander, still we still call each other on boom, what we call boom day when the oxygen tank exploded. And uh, I do a lot of talks, uh, again, mainly through Zoom, I'm talking to Astro Camps this summer, to a teacher uh, meeting at Johnson Space Center that are science and math teachers, those sorts of things. And of course, Apollo 13 is one of the primary subjects they like to hear about. NASA had so much growth in a period of time when you were part of NASA and in the years obviously afterward. What do you think about now about in terms of privatized space travel? We're talking about like Blue Origin and SpaceX. Are you excited to see that type of, of space exploration? Uh, yes, that SpaceX has been highly successful. Uh, in fact, uh, they're a little, little worrisome as they've been so successful uh, and it's that was that way in and squadrons I was in, and if you're really successful, you have to worry about complacency uh, and, and the preparation, uh, the workforce, and uh, you, you really need to keep, keep on your toes because uh, it uh, almost after a while begins to look maybe too easy. So some uh, former astronauts went into politics, others started businesses. Tell us about uh, your life since Apollo 13. But, uh, well, I, I was uh, invited to, to run from the uh, state of Mississippi, where I grew up, after Apollo 13 with that notoriety. Uh, but I had been around uh, Senator Stennis enough. I was the uh, only Mississippi uh, astronaut, so I attended a lot of events with the senator, and I realized the lifestyle uh, was not mine. And uh, as an engineer, I don't think I would fit into uh, what's required to be a successful politician. The whole world was watching as a lunar module you were piloting re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and then splashed down in the South Pacific Ocean. Uh, do you remember the feelings, what it felt like when that happened? At the time of the explosion? Uh, just in terms of the splashdown itself. Oh, the splashdown. Well, obviously, that was a uh, related. Uh, you really know when you have it made, when, as you see in the scene, when the three shoots, when you have at least at least two of the three, if you have uh, those out, you know you got it made. Until that happens, you really don't know if you've made it or not. Mm. Uh, so tell us a, li a little bit more about the book itself here. Is this your firsthand account? Uh, how, how is the book organized? Well, the book's organized uh, in, in the early part to give you a feeling of what it's like to grow up in the uh, 1930s uh, in that time frame uh, with none of those uh, fancy uh, laptops you have in front of you. Uh, and through the years, uh, flying in space and Apollo 13, I tried to stress uh, what's not covered is the pressure on all the people working on the program, the pressure of uh, meeting schedules. Uh, that Grumman, as I pointed out, one year in 67, test operations went on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, only shut down one day of the whole year, Christmas Day. And uh, it, it was very hard on uh, families. I also tried to give credit to more people. Uh, obviously, the movie Apollo 13 was limited in the size of the cast. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think he could have afforded how big the cast was. What did you think about the movie? I understand that Bill Paxton played you in the movie. 
I thought Bill did a good job. He was worried about that because uh, he told me he had never played a live person before. He had always played uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. a person or someone who has already passed away. And I told him not to worry about it. I thought he did fine. Great. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, once again, the book is called Never Panic Early, an Apollo 13 Astronaut's Journey. Sir, it's such an honor to talk to you. We really yes, appreciate your time you. this morning. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayes.